Hi, it's Dan Perry, and in this video, you're going to learn how to build a flagstone patio just like the one you see right behind me here. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first step in building your flagstone patio is to design and plan what you're about to build. So let's talk about the basic construction of pretty much any flagstone patio. Now some people might be tempted just to throw the rocks directly on top of the dirt and kind of level the dirt a little bit and then hopefully that's going to work. But I have bad news for you. There's a little bit more work required, especially if you want your flagstone patio to look good for a long period of time and not get all wavy and the stones be heaving up uh, six months down the road. Okay. So in order to do that and achieve a, a very professional look, you're going to need to do some more work. Okay. So it's, it's pretty basic. That was pretty simple. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is put down a three to four inch layer of this packed gravel base. Okay. And that's a type two gravel. This is the same stuff you use pretty much on any um, paver patio or retaining wall. It's cheap, it packs really well, and it creates a foundation for your flagstone patio. Okay, so again, three to four inches. Ideally, you're gonna go with at least four inches, but you can probably get away with about three inches, um, especially if you go with the system I'm about to show you here. Okay, and then this next level is going to be your leveling layer. And that's going to be a little bit finer of a gravel and that's going to allow you to kind of level out your flagstone patio so you can get the, e the top nice and even because most of your flagstones aren't going to be the same exact thickness. Okay. You're not just going to be a lamb right on top. You're going to have to make some adjustments. So what you're going to use here is called decomposed granite or DG. This is what they call it at a lot of the rock yards. So, and you're going to want to make sure to get the stuff with the screenings. Okay. And what the screenings are, it's the fine powder and the dirt that goes with the larger pieces of sand. So it's kind of a mix of about one millimeter diameter pieces of sand and like the really fine stuff. And that's really good because it's easy to level, but it also packs really well. And since you're going to be walking on it after you throw, um, put this layer down, you're not going to want to use sand because if you walk on sand, it's going to get all uneven. It's hard to walk on and you're going to be walking on this a lot as you build your, uh, your patio. Okay. And then finally you have your flagstones and then you can fill in the seams or the, the gaps in between your flagstones with dirt soil. You can plant stuff there if you want. Um, that doesn't really matter. Okay. That depends on your design. So again, you've got the type two gravel base, you've got an inch of this um, leveling, and then you've got, your flagstones, which are usually going to be about an, uh, one and a half inches to two inches thick. Okay. So you're probably going to need to dig down about six, five to six inches minimum, um, before you start laying down your patio. Okay. So let's talk about a few things you're going to want to consider while designing your actual flagstone patio. Okay. Number one is going to be your flagstone thickness. Okay. Now the thicker you get here, the more expensive it's going to be, but the stronger it's going to be. Okay. So if you're going to have build this as a driveway, then you're going to want to get at least two inch thick flagstone at a minimum. And you're probably going to want to do more like six inches of gravel base. Now, if you're just going to have it as a patio in your backyard, and you're just going to walk on it. Um, you know, you can go a little bit thinner, but the thing to consider here is they usually charge by weight for flagstone. So you're not going to pay by square footage. You're going to charge, they're going to actually charge you by how much it weighs. So the thicker stones you get, the more expensive it's going to be. Okay. So that's just something to consider. The second thing is the size of the flagstone. So you can get anything from, you know, maybe a foot wide to four feet wide, um, some really big stones. So you're going to want to consider like, what do you want to work with? Now I like to get the biggest stones possible because that means there's going to be less gaps in between. There's going to be less cuts. It's going to be less puzzling it together. So I try to get the biggest pieces possible, but you also want to make sure that you're able to move them and manipulate them, especially if you're working by yourself. And the third thing you're going to want to consider in your design is how thick you make these gaps between each uh, flagstone. Okay. Now, if you're going to plant something in there, if you're going to plant like moss or some sort of ground cover to kind of fill in there, then you're going to want to have at least like a two to two and a half inch gap there just to give yourself plenty of room to actually put some dirt in there and, and work with it. 
Now, if you're gonna use like, if you're gonna do it like I did in this patio, where you're just gonna, you, you don't want any weeds to grow, I don't want anything to grow in there, then you're gonna wanna fill it with this uh, decomposed granite. You'll just fill it all the way up, um, all those cracks in there, and weeds don't grow that great in it, you're still gonna get weeds, but you're gonna get a lot less compared to if you use dirt or something like that. Okay, and you're probably gonna wanna go with a tighter gap in between your flagstone. But here's something to consider. The tighter the gaps you make and the more consistent you want them to be, it's going to um, exponentially increase how long it's gonna take to install your patio because you're gonna be making a lot more cuts. And cutting these flagstones is probably the worst part, okay? It kind of sucks. So the, the bigger your gaps, it's the faster it's gonna go, the easier it's gonna be, the, the easier it's gonna be to install. But you know, if you want those tight seams, if you want it to look a little bit tighter like, like I did with my patio, then it's gonna take a little bit more time, but it's totally doable. And the last very important thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider while you're building your flagstone patio is you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's graded at an angle. So you don't want it to be perfectly level. Okay, you actually want it to be at a slight angle. Um, so water, you know, when, when water, when it's raining down on it and water goes, you don't want water to start pooling up. You want the water to just f um, flow off to one side. You're usually gonna wanna pay attention to your existing landscape and how that's graded and work with your existing drainage, okay? So in order to achieve that, okay, you're gonna wanna, so like this point is going to be lower than this point, right? Just so it's not completely level. And you're gonna to wanna to go about one eighth of an inch per foot, per one foot, okay? So you're gonna have one eighth of an inch drop for each foot you go this way. So if you had eight feet, you're gonna drop, this is gonna be one inch lower than over here. So it's pretty simple, and I'll show you how to do that in the video here. So that's what you need to consider before doing your flagstone patio. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is gonna to be to prep the area where you're gonna install your patio. So maybe you need to remove some dirt or adjust the grading a little bit like I had to do here before I installed my patio. And then once you're done doing that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to install any irrigation lines because you're not gonna be able to go back and do that later. And also make sure to call before you dig so you don't hit any existing utility lines. And the next step is to start digging. So you're gonna to wanna to dig down as far as you need to dig in order to install the gravel base. You know, you want three to four inches ideally of that, a uh, leveling layer of about an inch, and then the thickness of the flagstone. Now in this case, I'm actually going to be adding dirt to the sides around the patio. So I don't need to dig down quite as far, but um, as you can see here, this is just maybe three inches I've dug down, but I'm gonna be building up on the sides a couple of inches, so that helps me from having to dig so much. And then you can go ahead and add your type two gravel base, packing it down in two inch layers. You're gonna, and you're gonna to wanna to pack that either using a hand tamper like I did here, or you can rent a plate compactor if you wanna save on some labor. So to add this type two gravel base, I basically just wheeled it in with a wheelbarrow, poured it in consistent piles uh, throughout the patio, used a rake to flatten it out as well as I could, packed it down with a hand tamper, and then adjusted, made slight adjustments, packed it down. You just basically take your time and get yourself a nice foundation for your patio. And if you look closely, you'll notice the pink uh, string that's tied to each of my stakes. And that string is there to help me uh, grade the patio properly. So I'm using that to guide me as I add this first layer of my gravel base so I know that it's nice and flat and it's graded properly. And you can see that all of them are tied to this point right here, which is the low point in my patio, and everything else is gonna be high point, so it's gonna drain down towards that stake right there. And to set these lines at the proper angle, I used a line level. Now there's two different types of line levels. You can use one that's just um, for making the line perfectly level, put that on the line, and then you would adjust to where it was just perfectly level. You'd make a mark, and then basically you'd measure the distance between the stakes, and for each foot, you wanna grade down the patio at least an eighth of an inch. 
So if you had eight feet between each stake, then you'd want to go down a full inch or eight eighths. Okay. Another option is to use a line level that actually has the one eighth inch mark on it. So you don't have to worry about doing any math or anything or calculating the distance. You basically adjust it until it's just at that one eighth an inch of a drop. Go ahead and mark it. And then you'll want to tie that off. And once you've installed your gravel base and packed it down really well, the next step is to add your decomposed granite. So go ahead and pour that in consistent piles all across your patio. And then you're going to want to go ahead and use a rake to level it out really well so it's nice and smooth. And again, you're going to want to use the same mason's lines to make sure that it's at the grade you want and get it as flat as possible. And then finally, get it wet with a hose and tamp it down really well so it's nice and packed and you can actually walk on it. And now it's finally time to start adding your flagstone. Okay, so you're going to want to kind of puzzle these together to minimize cuts as much as possible. Okay, and then you're also going to want to make sure to use the bigger pieces first and put those around the perimeter so they kind of lock it together and hold it in. If you put smaller stones towards the outside, they're going to move and shift with time. So you're going to want to use the biggest ones around the outside. And this takes a long time, okay? This is a slow process. For me to get the gaps to be this small and consistent, I did a lot of cutting. I spent way too much time cutting. In fact, it took me about three days of bending over on my knees, cutting these pieces just to get them to fit perfectly together and use the biggest pieces possible. Now, I wouldn't waste your time with that. Just try to just get them down. Don't worry about the seams being perfect unless you really want to. And uh, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of labor. To cut the flagstone, you're going to want to use an angle grinder. Ideally a larger one than this, but you can use a four inch angle grinder like you see here if you'd like to. And this is quite a dusty process, so you're going to want to make sure to use eye protection, earplugs, and also a respirator. Cut most of the way through the flagstone and then just use a sledgehammer to knock off the rest. So once you've cut all your flagstone and you've puzzled them all together, you have the seams as tight as you're going to make them, the next step is to level out each individual flagstone because they're not going to be the same thickness and they're going to have bumps in the bottom and all kinds of different abnormalities that you're going to have to account for. So what you'll do is you'll take like a four foot level, place it across there to see if the edges line up, if it's kind of um, at the grade you set. Um, this looks pretty good this way. And then you'll check this way as well, just to make sure that they're all nice and flush and eat all the seams are even so you're not tripping all the time while you're walking on your patio. If you need to make an adjustment, you'll just pull it up, um, have a bucket of sand, just, just kind of dump it wherever you want to add some or have a little shovel to take it away. Uh, pretty simple, even it out, put your, thing, put your flagstone back in, kind of give it a little jiggle just to get it, get it nice and set in there. And then you're going to want to stand on it and make sure it's not shifting at all with your weight because when it shifts like that, it might break or um, it's just gonna be all wobbly and you just want a nice solid patio. So this is a pretty important step. And then once you're all set, you can go ahead and just make sure and tap it down to set that flagstone in place and move on to the next one. It's kind of a time consuming step, but it does make a big difference in the quality of your patio. And once you've leveled all the flagstones and you're happy with it, they're all nice and flush, you're not gonna be tripping all the time, you're pretty much done. So congratulations, the next step is really easy. You're just gonna take more of the decomposed granite with the screenings in it, the same stuff you use to level the flagstone, and you're just gonna dump it on there um, evenly around the patio and just simply take a push broom and push it around to fill in the gaps between the flagstone. And that's it. Just go ahead and spray it down with a hose to set the flagstone in place. And you're ready to plant stuff around it and add ground filler around it as well. And then you could sit back and enjoy your hard work and the labor because you've earned it. And as you can see, a flagstone patio can really make a big difference to your landscape. It takes a little bit more work than doing just a regular paver patio, for example, but it really gives you that natural and a unique feel to your yard. 
I'm Dan Perry, and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe below to get more videos just like this one. And if you enjoy DIY projects and you want to learn how to turn your skills into a profitable business, visit handymanstartup.com.